Hey folks, how's it going? We're checking out more Only Fools and Horses. Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic day, man. So last week was the first episode without Granddad. And it was a good episode. It was still funny. I still enjoyed it. But I'm still going to miss him as a character, like I said. But the uncle is starting soon. I'm not sure if it's in this episode or the next episode. But the uncle will be taking over pretty soon. And like you guys said, it's not like he's replacing Granddad. He's just a new character. And it actually makes the show better. So I'm looking forward to that. So let's just go to jump into it, folks. And we'll talk about it more in the end. Right, Trick? Yeah, I'm all right. Um, well, uh, yeah, it's all right. I know, Trick. I know, mate. You're going, uh, going back to the flat, are you? Yeah, I'm coming back. Yeah, do us a favor, will you? Go and open up. Yeah, I've got one or two things to do. Bung the vicar a couple of quid, that sort of thing. Um, See you know, that three over there? They're the uh, North London branch of the family. You know, make them welcome, will you? Keep your eye on them, eh? Yeah, yeah. sure. Thanks. Cheers, Trick. I love a nice funeral. Ooh. What's going about? There's two more after this. <laughs> I love a nice funeral. Come on, dude. We'll leave the car, shall we? Poor Rodney. Shit, poor Dale, man. I have a nice little walk, eh? Yeah. Can't listen to a nice walk, eh? Oi. Gently. <laughs> <laughs> Business in the pub. Oh, not bad, Boise, not bad. Oh, you didn't hear, did you? Thursday night, some burke nicked me cigarette machine. Never. Yeah. What about that sonic burglar alarm, Dell Boy soldier? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they nicked that and all. This is like they're laughing at a funeral. It was a lovely service, Vicar. Thank you very much. Has uh, anyone seen my hat? It was. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> they so bogus. I was sad when I saw that hat too. It wasn't even his. <laughs> it's like poor granddad in his hat. Well, I don't think it's right. Been people laughing in there. I ain't laughing. I ain't laughing today, I ain't laughing tomorrow. I don't want to laugh for the rest of my life. Yeah, everybody agrees definitely, man. Well, as long as you're happy, son. <laughs> <laughs> I'm away now, boys. I'll see you later. I think was going to mad everybody's I'm laughing and stuff, dude, but... Yeah, 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 thanks for coming, Mike. Here, you're doing a bit of a flyer, aren't you? No, oh, well, as a sign of respect for your granddad, I've decided to open the pub early. Oh, that's very nice of you, Mike. Appreciate the gesture, thanks. Oh, about the booze, it comes to 86 quid. Please, Mike. Don't discuss money now. Maybe it's a washer or something. Can a bloody washer pull the chain? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm not a scientist or something. Oh, like no. That. It's the uncle. No, it's all right. It's probably something, you know, quite simple. It's, you know, nothing, nothing at all, really. Why are you moving closer to the door? Where's my bloody hammer? <laughs> <laughs> Dale! Oh, leave it out, Rodney. You've heard him yourself when he was telling us about that time he came round the Cape of Good Hope. He was three months on the same wave. <laughs> I don't believe you, Del. I do not believe that you, of all people, could... Where do you think you're going? I'm going down the calf. I'm going to get some grub and some better company. <laughs> Gonna put some clothes on. <laughs> I was thinking you want on your PJs, dude. You 
changed, Del. Yeah, well, it's about time you did. Come on, we've got to go down to market later on. I mean, your personality has changed. I've seen a side of you I never knew existed. You don't understand, Rodney. You're right about that, Del. I mean, look at you last night. You was, you was laughing, you was drinking. I mean, why didn't you just put your Boney M record on, Del? We could have had a good old knees up. <laughs> <laughs> it was great, Dad. Get over it. What a plonker you really are, Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> Get over it. I ain't even started yet. I ain't even started, bruv. And do you know why? Because I don't know how to. That's why. Survived all my life with a smile and a prayer. I'm Del Boy, ain't I? Good old Del Boy. He's got more bounce than Zebedee. <laughs> hey, pal, what are you drinking? Go on. Hello, darling. You have one for luck. That's me. That's Del Boy, innit? Nothing ever upsets Del Boy. I've always played the tough guy. I didn't want to, but I had to. And I've played it for so long now, I don't know how to be anything else. Oh, it don't matter. Bloody families. I've finished with them. What do they do to you, eh? Hold your back, drag you down, and then they break your bloody heart. Sorry. Okay, all right. All right, pal, what are you drinking? Give him one. I'll have uh, Malibu and tonic with some lime and half a lager, please, darling. In the same glass? <laughs> <laughs> no, in separate ones, if you don't mind. Well, I don't know, do I? Might have been one of your erotic cocktails, Del. <laughs> Saucy little cow, that one, isn't she, eh? <laughs> all right, Del? Yeah, brill, terrific, how things? Oh, uh, you know, quiet. That yeah. reminds me, Del, about all that booze yesterday. Yeah, what about it? Went down a tree, didn't it? See you later, Mike. <laughs> Get a dude his money. Stop playing. Cheers. I wonder where he is. Hey, who? Uncle Albert. Oh, him. Ah, oh, well, he's down a seaman's mission by now, isn't he, eh? Got himself a lovely little bed, blinding little locker. Yeah. He's as happy as pig in sugar, he is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I suppose so, but it makes you think, doesn't it? I mean, man fights for his country like that, you know, line his life on the line. Do you know, he went down with five different ships. Yeah, I know. I don't know why he just didn't join the submarine corps in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Um, look, I ain't got very much. I've got what? Oh, Two. put your money away, Rodney. Oh, I don't want it. Thanks for the offer, though. Go on, you go back to Dell. Don't you worry about me. All right? Don't worry. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, try to lay it on. It's all right, Rodney. Nothing to worry about. It's just me lungs. We are a mine coming back from Normandy. <laughs> this is so extra. I was in a smoke filled engine room. Uh, well, if it's not one thing, it's another, right? <laughs> He went down a mission. It's not there anymore. He's just a marina. Well, can't he keep in the back of that? <laughs> so bogus. <laughs> Yachting marina. Mm. Oh, come on, Dill. There's Granddad's brother sitting over there. What do you want him to sleep by a doss house? Listen, Roddy. That bloke has been in shark-infested seas, right? He's been attacked by kamikaze pilots and blown up more times than a beach ball. <laughs> <laughs> A doss house ain't gonna do him any harm, is it? You don't believe all them stories, do you? <laughs> what, do you reckon they're porkies? <laughs> well, of course they are. I didn't want to say nothing, because, you know, he's a proud man. Oh, proud him? He comes from Dad's side of the family, doesn't he? No, I just offered him a couple of quid and he wouldn't take a penny. No, well, he wouldn't, would he? He's still got that hundred quid I gave him this afternoon. <laughs> you give him an hundred pounds? Yeah. 
Don't think I'd let him go out potless, do you? Then why didn't you have something to eat when you was in here at lunchtime, eh? Well, all they had left was sausage and mash, and I'd gone right all that. <laughs> Fancy an Indian? Wouldn't mind, son. Oh, we'd, we'd never get a table this time of night, Bill. No. We'd have to get a takeaway and eat it at home. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll get a takeaway and eat it at home, eh? If it's all right with you two, Dell. Thanks. I don't know what you're thanking me for. You're paying. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, oh, sit back. Let's get down there before the elf inspector. <laughs> Oi, I'm glad I caught you. I've just phoned the mission. They said they got a bed for you. <laughs> so yeah, man, this was a really good episode. It was written really well. They made sure to have like a nice little joke after each heavy moment. Just had to kind of like lift you up too much because you don't want to make a, a show that's primarily comedy to be too heavy, you know? Um... But it was tough, dude. Like, the the whole scene with the hat, when he, like, picked it up. I'm like, dude, granddad's hat, that's sad. It's like, you know, if you have a grandmother or somebody like that who knits all the time, and she passed away, and you see, like, a bowl with just her uh, her unfinished project and her knitting needles in it. That's so sad, man. The items people leave behind, um, because you automatically correlate that with that person. They're never going to touch it again. They're never going to finish a project again. Granddad's never going to wear this hat again. This smells like granddad. All this stuff is heavy, man. So just having that one hat scene was like a, like a well of emotions. Like, oh, yeah, man, they're showing the hat. Don't do that. Um, then, of course, the Dell scene, man. Fantastic acting on Rodney's and Dell's um, side, man. They both acted really well. Um, it was very, very. It was tough, man. And you know, it's like they were saying goodbye to a friend for real since he passed away in real life. And they're like speaking about somebody they actually like really, really like uh, care about. And I'm pretty sure they like, tapped into that for that scene. And it must have been like really tough to do that. Knowing like this, like he, we're never going to see him again for real. It's not like as a buddy that who was run off the show. I'm going to have a beer with him later. Like he actually passed away. So that had to be crazy tough. I can imagine, man. That had to be ridiculously tough. Yeah, man. Uh, it was definitely tough to watch, man. I've, I definitely feel, I felt a lot of what Dale was saying because I'm more very similar to Dale. When it comes to, like, not necessarily being, like, a tough guy, but being the person who's there for everybody when we lose somebody in a family. Um, I always like to be that person because I, I want to be somebody who's doing something as opposed to the person who needs something done to them. You know what I mean? Like, somebody who needs who needs to, a shoulder to cry on, somebody who needs to be looked after because when Josh gets sad, he's an emotional mess, and you got to bring him soup every day. I just I can't imagine being that person. So what's the alternative but to be the person who's there for everybody else, and I prefer to do that. Um, it actually, it helps me. It's not me being selfless. It just, it's me kind of being selfish because it actually helps me get through because I've been that bumbling person. Like when I lost my uncle when I was about 12 or 13, my family's up with a lot of loss, but it was like my first major, like major loss. And I remember feeling like I was never going to get over it. Like I felt I was like, in, it was a pit I was in and then constantly witnessing so many other people like fall into like this pit of despair. So I decided to be like the person who tries to be there for my family. So I can empathize him and uh, with him in that sense. And I have family members or like more like Rodney who are like, dude, this is a day of mourning. This is the way you need to mourn. Um, you need to mourn exactly like the way I'm mourning, which is never fair. Everybody mourns differently, man. I know people who, only celebrate the life of that person. They don't want to hear about, like, the death. They don't want to talk about the process of them going to the ground. None of that stuff. They only want to talk about, like, all the great stuff they did with that person. And they focus on nothing but the happiness. Um, I meet people who are similar to me who we do our mourning to ourselves. And then from there, we try to help our family and friends out. Um, then I meet people like Rodney who are like, dude, this is the way it should be. And everybody should be this way. And... People like Rodney, I think Rodney's young. He doesn't understand people mourn differently. I think that's the way they wrote it. Like, he's young. He doesn't understand people mourn differently. Everybody should mourn. Everybody should feel the way that I'm feeling. And a lot of people don't understand that that's just not the way it works. I'm more on, like, the Dell, I guess, the Dell side of the camp when it comes to that stuff. And that was a fantastic scene. They did good. They did really good. Dell and um, Rodney did really, really good. It was such a short scene. Well, it was, like, two minutes long. But it was tough. It was tough to watch. Um... It was very sad. Granddad will be missed, but like I said, it's even sadder the fact that he passed away for real. So, yeah, man. Fantastic. Well done. Great job. Uh, good episode. Sad episode. 
Alright guys, that is it. I've talked long enough. That is all for this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Hopefully you guys did not shed any tears. Maybe you guys are stronger than me. <laughs> um, it was tough to watch that scene and not like, you know, I'm usually pretty good at holding it in. Um, I got a few techniques. So like you squeeze this a little bit to try to get it to stop. But yeah, it was definitely a little, it was, it, was, it got me. It got me. Dale got me. <laughs> Let's just say that, man. He got me. So, all right, guys, that is all for this one, man. Hopefully, you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. I'll see you in the next one. Later.